let's learn a little bit about the scientist who figured out all they did about DNA, which means you get to learn about it today. First scientist I want to talk about's name is Frederick Griffith. He, in 1928, was looking to find a vaccine for pneumonia. While he was doing his research, he found there were two different strains or kinds of pneumonia. The S bacteria, or smooth, had a capsule along the outside of it, which provided it protection and enabled it to cause the disease. The R bacteria did not have this capsule and could not cause disease. So the first thing he did was he took some S bacteria and he put it into a mouse, and the mouse died. Second thing he did was he took the R bacteria and put that into a mouse, and the mouse did not die. So Avery wasn't sure whether it was the capsule of the pneumonia bacteria or the pneumonia itself that was making the mouse die. So what he did was he took the S bacteria, the one with the capsule, and he heat killed it. So the pneumonia itself was dead, but the capsule was still there. And he put it into the mouse, and the mouse lived. Now here comes the tricky part. He took that heat killed S bacteria, mixed it with some live R bacteria. Now remember, R bacteria was harmless. Put that into the mouse, and it ended up dying. What he found out happened was the R bacteria, the harmless bacteria, took information from the dead S bacteria on how to make those capsules and used it to make capsules of itself so then it could make the mouse sick. Pretty nifty. Now when I taught this in class, I gave the example of a knight in armor, like the S bacteria, or someone without armor, the R bacteria, and a dragon. But I don't have those props with me here today, but what I do have is Little puppy dogs. This one has protection. He has his little lab coat to keep him safe. So this would be the S bacteria. This guy is the R bacteria because he has no coat to keep him safe. And they are dueling the evil teddy bear. So first thing he did was the S bacteria and the mouse killed it. Second thing he did, R bacteria, mouse, nothing. Mouse was fine. Third thing he did is he took the S bacteria, but he killed it, put it in with the mouse. Mouse is fine. No big deal. No, no, mouse. The last thing he did was he took the heat killed S bacteria, the R bacteria, alive and put it in the mouse. Essentially what this happened, what happened here is this bacteria took the protection from the other bacteria. They took the code, the genetic code on how to do that. So now he is protected and he can defeat the evil mouse. So the mouse dies. What this is called is transformation. Transformation is a change in genotype caused when cells are going to take up foreign genetic material. So the R bacteria took up the foreign genetic material of the S bacteria, making it able to cause the mouse to get pneumonia. That's scientist number one. Now, scientist number two is a guy named Avery. Now, we know that transformation happens, but we didn't know what's responsible for transformation. So he worked with a couple different enzymes and this process to see what causes it to happen and what can cause it to stop. So when he mixed this, the transformation process, with a protein destroying enzyme, nothing happened. It still went on. So protein is not responsible for transformation. But when he mixed in a DNA destroying enzyme, what happened is the process stopped. Transformation did not happen. So you take away the DNA, no more transformation. So that means that tr DNA is responsible for transformation. We can thank Avery for that one. Now, some people believed Avery, but a lot of people didn't believe it. DNA was new and exciting at this time, I think 1940s. People really didn't know what to believe. They also knew that proteins were very important. Proteins are responsible for lots of different things in the body, so they were like, protein is our genetic information. We'll give that that responsibility as well. Along came Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase in 1952. What they did is they worked with uh, something called a bacteriophage. 
Here is an example of a bacteriophage. This is a million times larger than it is in real life, but this is what it looks like. It's got this protein coat on the outside, and it's got these awesome little legs down here, and a tube area in the middle, and this is where the DNA is held. A bacteriophage is a virus. This virus is going to land on a bacteria, pierce the bacteria, stab a hole in it, take its DNA, put it down into the bacteria, which it will copy lots and lots and lots and lots of times, making a lot of these little guys inside the bacteria, will break out of the bacteria, kill the bacteria, and this guy wins. Pretty nifty. So they were working with bacteriophages. What they did with bacteriophages is this. They took two different sets of bacteriophages. The first one, they put a radioactive tag on the outside of it, on the protein. That would be the green part of this bacteriophage. The second one, they put a radioactive tag on the DNA part of the bacteriophage. And what happened is... Sorry! Stay. Possessed. It's so exciting talking about DNA. Day camera. What happened is when this DNA gets inserted into here, all the radiation stayed on the outside of the cell. In this bacteriophage, when it inserted its DNA, the radiation went into the bacteria. So when they saw that, they realized that yes, DNA is the genetic material of viruses. And that helps clarify a lot of things for a lot of people. We got two more scientists going on. 1951, Rosalind Franklin, a woman in science. Ah. What she was doing was taking pictures of the actual DNA molecule using something called X-ray diffraction. She got these really neat pictures of DNA if you were looking down. Imagine sitting at the top of a spiral staircase looking down all the way to the ground. That's kind of the view she got through her pictures. They did not she got a lot of information from these pictures, but was trying to get solid scientific evidence before going public. Then her buddies Watson and Crick came over for a visit. Watson and Crick saw these pictures she had taken, went along with some of the information they had already gathered, took their hunches, and went public with it. Watson and Crick are the two gentlemen credited with discovering the double helix model of the DNA. They went public, so they get all the credit for it. So, remember, behind every successful man is a woman who did most of the work. But, in all honesty, Watson and Craig did discover the, from what they took from Rosalind Franklin, they did come up with the concept of the double helix model of DNA that you all know and love today. So that's it. Happy studying, and talk to you next time. Bye.